Hi and welcome to Vintage Doll Collector. Today I've got travel souvenir and regional dress dolls from all over the world to show you. Most of them came from the same collection as the dolls in my antique doll haul video I did recently. They were collected by the original owner in the 1920s and 30s, some on her travels and others from dealers and shops. I also have some vintage and interesting modern travel dolls to show you too, so let's get started. This couple have hickory wood bodies with jointed arms and hickory nut heads. His name is Elmer. I think he must have had a hat originally. This is Grandma Scott. She has a label sewn on the back of her petticoat. It reads, Kimport Dolls, Independence, Missouri. This doll was made in the Ozarks. Kimport sold handmade dolls from all over the world through their mail order catalog. The way their eyebrows are painted gives them sort of a worried look. They were made during the Great Depression, so that's understandable. These bottle stoppers are carved wood with corks attached. They were probably made in Germany. Here's a Parsi Indian woman. She was purchased in 1935. She's all cloth with painted facial features. She has leather sandals and individually stitched fingers. This tiny carved wooden boy was purchased in Italy in the 1930s. Here's a doll from Bermuda. The inventory says that her head is wood, but it might be a nut of some kind. Her tag reads, I come from Bermuda, the Isles of Sunshine. I'm dressed in banana and native screw pine. She's nine inches tall. This Mexican woman has a baby peeking over her shoulder. She's carrying three things on a string. Look like maybe they were containers of some kind, but they're delicate and they got squashed. She stamped Mexico here. The three smaller man dolls are also from Mexico, stamped on their legs. These two are carrying tools. This one is carrying the same thing as the woman. This man is from South America, not sure which country. If you know, please leave me a comment. He's carved from wood and has a wonderful face. He has a shoulder strap to help him carry his melon. According to the provenance, he was purchased from Velva Lee Dickinson in 1939. She was a doll importer who moonlighted as a spy. She was caught and convicted and sent to prison. This couple was purchased in Florida in 1938 and are made of coconut fiber with painted faces. The lady's missing an arm. If I take off her hat, you can see she's stuffed with straw or excelsior or something. Here's a little Native American baby doll with composition head and stuffed body on a cradle board. His headband is leather. He comes attached to this card with a poem on one side and the other side is a mailing label, one and a half cents postage. According to the provenance, this is from the 1920s. In one of my previous videos, I had a pair of doll sized moccasins with a mailing label similar to this one. It's amazing to me that at one time you could ship things without any packaging whatsoever. The post office has definitely changed since then. This hand-carved African figure was made about 1940. This one was also supposedly purchased from Velva Lee Dickinson. A woman carrying a baby. Their heads appear to be made of clay with wire bodies wrapped in paper. The inventory said they were from Guatemala, but I believe the ink stamp on the bottom says Salvador, or what we would now call El Salvador. Here's a grouping of cloth dolls that actually are from Guatemala. A couple of them have ink stamps on the bottom of the wooden bases that read Caravan with a K, New York, made in Guatemala. The original store price tag from McGinnis Company is $1. 
The other two have old paper labels. On the front, they're stamped San Juan. These chickens in a wooden cage are from Guatemala as well. These five dolls are from China, made before 1940. They have heads of some type of composition and silk clothing. This man has some damage to his face. He has a molded hat. A lovely lady. This guy is Li Chiguai, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, also known as Iron Crutch Li. He's one of the eight immortals in the Taoist pantheon. He uses the gourd bottle in his left hand to dispense medicine to the poor. Check out his bare feet. Another lady doll. This man has a very serene expression. They're all marked Made in China on the bottom of the wooden bases. They may all be immortals, I'm not sure. These two are a little larger than the others and have more detail. This lady has beautifully molded hair. The other doll has silver foil decorations on her robe. She's the Dowager Empress. This is the Japanese immortal God of War. He was purchased at the Japanese Pavilion at the New York World's Fair in 1939. This brass ornament on his helmet is broken and his face is peeling a bit. He's made of wood, I believe, very lightweight, but some of his decoration is fabric that's been applied to the surface. Very interesting. Here are some of the smaller dolls that came with this collection. This little guy is very flat. He's also coming apart. I need to glue him back together. I'm not sure where he's from. Three little Chinese cloth dolls. This one comes apart in the middle. Any idea why? Leave me a comment if you know. She's very flat also. The other two have rounder heads. This is a Native American doll with a beaded head and beaded decoration, and the rest is leather. I don't know where she's from. The inventory just says very old. These tiny thread-wrapped worry dolls are from Guatemala. The rest of these dolls are not from the same collection. Some are old and some are newer. This is a Russian nesting doll called a matryoshka. This one is just three parts. There's a label on the bottom, but half of it is missing. Here's a Nora Wellings doll made in England. These are called Islanders, but I'm not sure which island they're supposed to be representing. He's made of velvet with a mohair wig and has glass eyes. Unfortunately, he's lost his tag, which should be sewn to the bottom of his foot. Check out this guy. He has a composition type five piece body and a paper mache head. The button reads Tijuana, Mexico. I love this limbo dancer. I would imagine she was a souvenir from Jamaica or another Caribbean country. She's covered with fabric, but it feels like there's styrofoam underneath. These dolls are Mongolian and represent a bride and groom. They're made of wood covered with fabric. They have hand-painted faces and real fur around their heads. This is a modern wood carving from the African nation of Ghana made by the Ashanti tribe. The lizard design on her head is done with beads. Something is applied to the wooden surface and then the beads are embedded in that material. 
This awesome doll is stamped Made in China on the bottom of the base, and there's also a label right here on the front. She appears to be doing some kind of spinning work. Over here is what looks like a wood fire, and I think these little white things are meant to be hot coals. There's a handle on the back, and when you turn it, the wheel, or whatever you call this part, rotates. Very cool, huh? If any of you are fiber artists, please leave me a comment as to what you think she is doing. I would love to know. Check out this Dutch doll. She's made of hard plastic. She has a yoke across her shoulders, but instead of carrying two pails of water, she's carrying tulips in little delf buckets. They're even marked on the bottom. She has a wrist tag that reads, Lucky Doll, B-N-W, The Hague, Holland. Ronaug Pedersen was a doll maker from Norway. If I'm not pronouncing her name correctly, please leave a comment and let me know how it should be said. This doll made by her is a bride from the Voss district of Norway. This doll from Russia has a china head, hands and feet on a cloth body. Her hat and collar are made from real fur and her hair is white acrylic yarn. I've seen lots of this type of doll. They're always dressed in simple dresses with fancy trims. I believe this cloth doll is Russian also. You see he has the same white yarn hair. I think he wasn't meant to be a travel souvenir like most of the other Russian dolls you see, but as a children's play doll. This is a Japanese doll representing a daimyo or feudal lord. They ruled most of Japan from the 10th century to the mid 19th century. His outfit is made of some kind of paper or non-woven material. He has a tag explaining a little bit about him. Most contemporary dolls, both for kids and for collectors, are made in China these days, but this one is made as a tourist souvenir and was purchased in Beijing. She has a beautiful face with unusual eyes, but very cheesy construction. Her skirt is glued to the base all around, so you can't see that her body is just a styrofoam stump. She only has one foot, which is peeking out from under the skirt. Here are some vintage European dolls in their original boxes. This doll from Italy has black hair and beautiful blue eyes. The label on her dress says Abruzzo. Here's another Italian doll made by Ratty. Her outfit is felt. And this is a Bavarian boy, made by Gura. These two ladies are from Thailand, made of cloth and have beautiful faces. The seated one has a label on her back. This is a Tarahumara Indian doll, made in Mexico carved from one piece of wood. Thanks for joining me today. Next month I'll be doing another video of dolls from around the world, including quite a few English-made dolls, a seal skin doll from Alaska, and some more Ronaug Pedersen dolls from Norway. But my next video is going to be vintage dolls, including a Unita dollykin in a hard-to-find outfit, a cosmopolitan ginger with a wardrobe of clothes, and a skipper dream room from the 1960s. If you want to be notified when I have new videos posted, click the subscribe button and the little bell icon. Thanks again for all your support, and see you next time. Okay.